technology designed by Alexander Graham Bell in 1876. He created a mobile, he created a landline phone, which was used by the wires, but that was limited by certain distance as we cannot take away the wires with us. So the wireless communication slowly, slowly become very, very popular, became very popular, right? Naturally in wireless, as the name indicates, wireless means what? We don't require any wires between the transmitter and receiver or between one end to the another. And the other name of that technology is cellular technology. So if we talk of the 5G, 5G stands for fifth generation. But before that, the 2G was very popular, which is called a second generation, third generation, fourth generation. And nowadays we are very swiftly moving towards this advanced technologies. But before this, what is basically these Gs are? right? These Gs are the generations and these are based on the cellular technology. Now, if we see the wireless communication in which the several small exchanges are there and which are called as cells, these are called as cells, right? Which are equipped with the low power radio antennas and these are interconnected through a central exchange. Now, as a receiver, receiver means cell phone. You have a cell phone, you have a handset that moves from one place to the next place. Its identity, its location and radio frequency is handed over by one cell to another. So the very small exchanges we call as cells. And when the person moves as it is a mobile, mobile means movable, which we can take in our pocket, we can carry with us. So the cells move from one cell to another. So now what are the basic requirements in this? If we see, now that is called as the handover. Handover means transfer of call from one cell to another. Now these cells are there which are called as base stations. These are placed or spaced and this technology is called as reuse. Here we can reuse the frequency also. Now, there are uh, designing of this various base station controller are there. BSC stand for base station controller. We have one base station here. We have second base station here. We have third base station here. And when this person is supposed here, it is moving from one base station to another. Suppose call is started here, right? Like this. Then when the area of this base station is over, it is entered to next base station and so on. And in this way, the call is transferred from like this you can see a core is there which is moving now when it is in the prefix or area of this particular base station it is in under its control and when it moves next it takes under the next base station and in this way the call is transferred from one point to another now the gap what we call this cell structure is normally hexagonal in nature so this is the design by which most of the systems are covered now if we take talk of this wireless technology the first technology was called as gsm which is the digital technology earlier to that we had amps which is called as analog mobile phone service in which so many facilities were not there but with the invention of GSM, which is called as Global System for Mobile Communication, now whole over the world is normally going by this form, this technology. Now this is the fully digital technology in mobile. It uses 900 megahertz or 1800 megahertz frequency. It has 124 channels for transmission. There is an automatic location. Handover facilities are there. Frequency reuse service is there. Now it has a transmission power in headsets is there. And what are the uh, features we use? What are the technology we use? Standards we use? It is called as IS-95. It also uses the direct sequence CDMA with binary modulation and demodulation. Now, <clears throat> this technology is consisting of, we are all aware that, that we have seen from our childhoods, there are at least two things are required. What are the main elements? Now, the first element required is mobile equipment. Naturally, that is the hardware part or handset, we say. And the second is the SIM, which is the software part. So we call it as a subscriber identity module. Without this, we cannot communicate. 
So in the picture you are seeing the front part of that mobile also, the back part of that mobile that were earlier available. Earlier we had the various mobiles, Nokia phones were there, Motorola phones were there, but with the advent of the time, the smartphones are now available. Now, after 2G, there was a 2.5G, which is called as general packet radio switching, in which we had the facility of SMS also we could transmit the message also, right? But still that date, 2G does not support the internet. If we show that some of the areas are there in which hilly areas are there or net is not there, so we can only call, but it does not support internet. It does not support the other facilities. We cannot download. So this is GSM. The first is GSM, then we had GPRS, and then we have the UMTS. Then, after that CDMA, the other part of this GSM, other very different form of the GSM is CDMA, which stands for Code Division Multiple Assess, which was the advanced cellular technology in which the data rate was little bit higher. But it had the problem of earlier near far. And therefore, if we overall see the current CDMA penetration in the world is about 27%, whereas the GSM, which is called as Global System for Mobile Communication, it has the penetration level of 72%. So if we say the generations of that, how the generation started, so you can see the first generation, which was totally analog, that started around the 1990s. Then the digital came into picture. Between 1990 to 2000, we carried 1995. It was your GSM, CDMA technology was there. Then after that, we had the uh, uh, packet mode, which is called as GPRS, then UMTS, which is now used at a much faster rate. Then in wireless, we have so many Wi-Fi fidelities are there, which we are using, in which all the local area network technology technology are used and the standard for Wi-Fi is IEEE 802.1111 or 11 we can say. Now it can cover the greater distance, right? But normally the Wi-Fi systems are not designed to support high speed mobility and also it has higher power consumption. Moreover, it requires the expensive hardware. Then we have the Bluetooth technology. Normally we are using in our mobiles that Bluetooth technology is specially used for short range communication technology, it is called. It is used for short distance. It uses the frequency 2.4 gigahertz, but the data rate is up to one Mbps. And it is used for small scale applications. Then we have the WiMAX, which is covering the your micro technology. Again, there are with the net of internet, we have WCDMA and so many applications nowadays we are using in WCDMA, like internet applications are there, browsing is there, video telephone is there, email is there, we have network games are there, video conferencing we can go for, audio, music, and again, the corporate LAN access we can go for, the file transfer we can go for. So, so many applications are there which are covered in WCDMA application. Then after 2G, 2.5G or 3G, nowadays these are, you can say, the stories of the earlier generations. We have moved from 4G. Now it is a very, very common. Naturally, if we see the C around us, we are going for the internet banking. We are going for the videos. We are going for so many shoppings which are based on the commercialization. So all these applications require very high speed of data. We are going for the railway bookings and so and so. There are so many applications around us which require very high data speed. And for this, we move from 3G to 4G. So now 4G is called as the fourth generation. It is the next major generation of mobile cellular system which was started around 2010. Now you can say, what is the difference between 4G and 3G? So there are 12 views of 4G. What is that? Number one, it supports higher bit rates, naturally. Number two, cost reduction. Then depending upon the user, we can support certain design, certain services. Then it has the wireless wireline. The new air interface is there. 
then technological trends as per the requirement service providers are there so so many features are there which support us the fourth generation right so if we see the itu itu stand for international telecommunication communication or union it defines 4g as 100 mbps mobile and 1 gbps stationary so what is the data transfer rate earlier we had only few kb right but in 4g the data transfer rate is up to 100 mbps and 1 gbps when it is stationary 4g is also totally ip based network it is also covered also called as lte which is long term evaluation 4G has interface with Bluetooth, ZigBee, WLAN, and GSM. It has so many applications in health, medical applications, in communication services, in education, in consumer, transportation, entertainment, industry, and defense, and so on. And uh, so many applications we can use for 4G. You can see like internet is there, online classes are there, Bluetooth is there, so many devices are connected, or we have to go for online health record. So this is 4G. Uh, if we see now some of the applications here, I will cite here like RFID. If we go for your attendance, uh, marking the attendance, 4G is helping us, right? It is used for short range communication again, near field communication, which is called as NFC. Again, mobile telecommunication, we can go for that. Then they get information by touching small poster. It is again great applications. You may have visited certain malls, seminars, where some pictures are there, where we can just touch that screen and we can get the information, right? Then wireless home offices with their touch, we can go for that. Again, some of the application which covers print from your camera by holding it close to the printer. Again, get on the bus by waving your phone. Pay for goods with a tap of your NFC phones. We have now smart cards are there. Then business applications. So all of these have the 4G applications where we require very sophisticated and high data transfer rate. Then uh, after that, if we go for 5G, which is the buzz word nowadays, and so many applications are there which we are using for 5G. Nowadays, if we see, a lot of applications are there like your IoT applications. IoT stands for Internet of Things. Smart applications are there. Smart buses are there. Smart cities are there. Driverless cars are there. Now the world is moving towards that great area in which we have so many applications. And for this, we require very high data transfer rate. So therefore, the data transfer rate which is provided by 4G is not sufficient and we have to move towards the newer technology. So what is 5G provides us? 5G, as we are saying that, it is helping a great help to our humanity. And what is future of humanity with 5G? Naturally, 5G will bring us faster connectivity than ever before, right? And if we compare the 5G, with the 4G, so you can see by 24 May this year, 40% of the world will be covered by 5G because nowadays AI techniques are there, IoT is there, smart systems are there. All require very, very great applications of 5G, right? So we will discuss after that what are the applications of 5G nowadays. Then 5G network revenue in 2021 was, you can see, 4.2 billion US dollars. So that was the revenue. Again, all of the world has spent on the 5G infrastructure. The amount was 2.3 billion US dollars. Then what is more important to us is number of 5G connections. So it was 20 to 100 millions, right? Then availability rate or coverage was 99.9%. And then reduction in network energy usage was 90%. So now we are also looking after ki how the energy can be saved, how it is safe for our environment. So these are the new features where we are involving in 5G. How it is favoring our environment or supporting our environment that we call it the green energy. So whatever new technology what we are designing, that should be supporting to our environment. Now, in 5G, the word is network slicing. So what is slicing? So 5G makes it easier 
to split the network to the tailor speed. So we can change the speed of as per requirement. Now we see we have so many applications. Like if I'm working on audio, I require very low data transfer speed. Whereas if I'm downloading certain video or certain high system, I require high data transfer speed. So it can be done like this. Then it supports the capacity. It supports certain coverage area. It supports an encryption where I require the data to be transmitted in an encrypted format means security. Then it is supporting all this. So again, it is using high bandwidth, high reliable. The system is highly reliable, low latency. It has very low latency and low energy, right? So and we are also focusing on the energy now. Now, if we see the comparison of 4G and 5G, in 4G latency, latency means delay. So in 4G, the delay is 200 milliseconds. Whereas in 5G, it is just one millisecond. So it means you can transfer your data at a much higher speed. Then what is more important is data rate. Data rate is 100 into times improvement is there. right? So we can have a data rate more than 100 times as compared to your 4G. Naturally, it will save our time. We can download the very important files with a much lesser time. Then 4G sports 4,000 devices per kilometer square. In one area, in a one kilometer area, the 4G sports 4,000 devices, whereas 5G sports 1 million devices in that same area, right? So this is a great advantage. Now it is, everything is going to be smart. And for smart, we require to be connect various devices with each other. So therefore, 5G is much supporting them. If we talk of speed, in 4G, the speed is 100 Mbps, whereas in 5G, the speed is 10,000 times 10,000 Mbps. So it means it is at least 100 times more than the 4G. So if we see just an example, downloading an average HD movie on 4G takes 50 minutes, whereas 5G takes just 9 minutes. So our systems are become much more faster. They are becoming much more reliable, much more efficient. And we are also nowadays worried about the battery because every mobile is supported by the battery, which is its backup. So and battery life is naturally more important because it involves the cost. So in the 5G, the battery life will increase by 10 years. So this is points which goes in much favor of 5G. Again, we have already discussed the global mobile market growth in 2014. It was 3.6 6 billion and naturally in 2020, it rose, rose to 4.6 billion dollars. Right. So, so much growth is there in the market. Now, uh, if we just talk of the, what is the difference between the uh, 4G and 5G technology, 5G is end-to-end -end ecosystem to enable a fully mobile and connected society, as I had told. So it is supporting our smart homes. Now our government is supporting the smart cities. Smart homes are there. Ecosystems are there. Health services are there. Emergency response is there. Infrastructure is there. So the only solution is 5G. Because just we have seen in 5G, the mobile data volumes have been increased to 1000 times. The connected devices have been increased to 10 to 100 times. Lower latency, it has reduced the latency or delay by five times. Then end user data rates have been increased to 10 to 100 times and the battery life is increased to 100 times. So these are the points which are favoring helping the 5G and that is the humanity or contribution of 5G. So uh, now if I talk of the 5G, so it is not a evolution, but it is a complete mobile system because here we are expecting connecting everyone, even each our device is connected, right? Then the various uh, objects are connected environment friendly is there and it is much faster than the 
4G. So you can see here. So if we talk of the 5G as a lot of newer technologies, what we are talking of now are totally based on the 5G expectation. Because now what is expected, we are talking of the driverless cars. So if we just take an example, now in driverless car, there is a no driver is there. And decision has to be taken within nanoseconds so that next action can be taken. For example, any other driver is coming, any car is coming, and both the cars are in front. Now, the decide it has to be decided that a brake should be applied. And that decision should be within nanosecond. If it is not happening, then the accident will be there. It means the data transfer rate should be very, very fast, which can guide the system to turn the engine off and apply the brakes. And for this, very high speed is required, right? Then uh, the 5G sports, 10,000 times more traffic. Traffic means the data transfer, the calls which it can handle. Then 10 to 100 more devices can be connected. Latency again, it is reduced to one milliseconds. Battery life is increased to your 10 years. Then machine to machine, it is ultra low cost. Energy, it is reducing. And devices, ultra reliable. This is ultra reliability we have. The system is highly reliable. So what are the applications of 5G if we see? Number one, interaction, human IoT, right? Then broadband experience. Now during the last two years, Corona time, we had the classes from our home. We were using the broadband. So here we can use the broadband at much faster rate. Again, critical control of remote devices were there. Media, every day we have the media, smart vehicles are there, infrastructure is there, transport is there. So these are some of the applications of 5G. Then regarding the frequency ranges that is used in 5G. So 5G is using three broad frequency ranges. Number one is called as sub giga, one gigahertz, sub means less than one gigahertz, then one to six gigahertz, and next is above six gigahertz. So these are the frequency ranges that we are using in 5G. Then it is the graph which indicates the venue versus traffic growth. So if we see the traffic is more, more means there are more number of calls. Traffic, we can say the audio downloading, video downloading, more number of traffic it can handle. But again, the with the lesser cost, we can use that. So that is called as revenue. Now you see, uh, in India, we have the lowest data transfer rates, right? So it is supporting and helping the humankind. So if we now talk of the various applications of the 5G, so why 5G is much more famous and how it is helping to the human society? Number one is higher data transfer rate. So just I have told in 5G, it can handle the 10,000 times more traffic and more number of devices it can connect. Nowadays, everything is on cloud and therefore the data transfer rate should be much more. So if we talk of cloud, so by using the 5G, the, we can have the desktop like experience, right? Again, so many services are there, like we can have the media everywhere. It is used for constant ultra high quality experience. Then IoT nowadays is a great buzzword in which all the things are connected. IoT stands for Internet of Things, where all the devices are connected with each other. So it supports that. And also it is used for real time remote control of the machines with very high data transfer rates. So that is, we call it as a IoT. Then the next is smart homes. If we see now, you see if we see the culture, everything is smart in our homes. Now, what do you mean by smart? Every device that we are using in our homes is smart. Means they can check the accuracy for themselves. For example, I am traveling by a car to my home. Now my home is smart. So when I start from the workplace, I can turn the AC on from my workplace okay. so that when I enter my home, all the things as per routine working. 
right? It should appear in cool to me. So this is a smartphone. Then other applications are there. We are using so many devices in our home. Now, today, see what is doing. My device is not aware about its condition. Now, in this technique, smart homes, the device can check its condition by itself, by itself. And if is there certain fault, it can directly contact to the service center accordingly. So this is helping a lot and reducing the burden of the owner. So if any burglar is there, it can directly contact the police and so on. So now in smart home system, the devices are taking care of their health automatically by themselves, right? And the owner does not have the moderation of making them, servicing them, and all these problems are overcome. So this is meant by smart homes. So every device of the home are smart enough. Then logistics are there. Now logistics means, now you can see some of the applications are there. So efficient use of RFID tags. So now we are transferring the parcels by using the various tags are there. So it can be much more efficient. The tracking can be much more easy. So that is called as efficient use of RFID tags. Then accelerated packing and labeling is there. Again, we can use smart tracking devices for accurate monitoring of temperature, shock, light exposure, humidity, extra other things are there. Then real-time GPS location tracking and reporting. Nowadays, without 5G, it is not possible to have real-time GPS location. Right. So if we are talking of the driver's car, giving the instruction to even our car, uh, we are going to the unknown place, right? And we are just giving the message, giving the command, if we should reach at the destination. So with this facility, we can reach at very right destination. So that is called as real-time GPS location, tracking and reporting. Then efficient monitoring that minimizes theft risk and misplacing of items. Again, real-time delivery tracking and reporting. Then self-driving cars and drones for future good delivery. For example, you are living in certain hostel. There are a lot of buildings are there. Again, a lot of rooms are there. In a building, there are 100 rooms are there. With the 5G, if you give the command to any drone, then that packet will be delivered to your particular room address. So this is called as drones for future goods delivery. Now there are so many uh, places are there where the human cannot go there, right? So there are certain uh, geographical limitations are there, but we can ask drones to carry the needs and send at the desired destination. So this is helpful in so many war conditions also, so many other applications also. So this is possible for 5G only because here what we require we require the exact location where the particular good should be delivered. Then, next is your sustainability efficiency. So we have seen, now 5G is designed for strictly environment friendly. So as here the battery, what we are using, it is giving us the 10 years more capacity or life it is saving so much electronic waste. Nowadays, with the uh, invention of the various electronic products, what is the main problem? That is e-waste that we are creating. Naturally, every electronic device had certain life. And after that, it is waste to us. But that is creating the electronic waste. That is a great problem for our society nowadays. right? So it is creating so much problems. So if life is more, naturally electronic waste will be less. So as in 5G, there is a very less wastage is there. It is supporting the environment. It is helping the environment. And that is why we call it as a green technology. And therefore, it is sustainable. Then we are using smart sensor technology, right? That is used for various industrial IoT applications. It is used for various agriculture applications. It is safe. It is cost effective. And so many energy efficient industrial operations are there. 
then uh, whatever data we are giving, we are giving it to the cloud and taking the data from that place. Again, the some of the very great applications are the remote monitoring, vehicle locations is there, vehicle diagnostic is there. Again, it can be used for various controls like remote controls and then all the devices here, they can be connected together with the 5G internet. So that is helping us a lot in various 5G technologies. Then the health monitoring, one of the great applications of the 5G is the health monitoring as it can be used for the direct data transfer. Suppose there is a doctor who is operating in Jalandhar. Now he has to consult a very senior doctor in Bombay or in America or in New York, any place or in Ames. So here he can directly take the consultation live because data transfer rate is too much and there is no hick in that. If they can talk at a much faster rate, the direct problem diagnosis and its treatment can be done online without any latency, without any time delay. So that helps us the in saving the life of the humankind. Right? So this is helpful in this. Again, the driverless cars, just I had told, now you can see the case here. There are so many cars which are passing by. Now, if there is a very less speed, what is happening now? There is no driver in the car. It means the system has to apply the brakes. And if the data transfer rate is less, what will happen if these two cars will be closing to each other? they will have an accident can be done. So in this case, the decision can be taken, should be taken within very small time of the order of micro or nanoseconds. And for this, the data transfer rate should be very high. And therefore, the 5G sports all in this latest activities. So here we can go for the driverless cars and it is possible only for the 5G technology. Again, which can be used in so many drone cases that we are using for that. Radars are there. Then various drones we can use. It can be used for map-based geolocation. It can be used for navigation applications. And if we see the 5G security, now the 5G has the various applications in industrial automation. Right? It is used for enhanced data connectivity. It is naturally used for some gaming applications. We are connecting cores agricultures we can uh, help our farmers in designing so much dedicated applications based on 5g we can design the drones which can go for the water spraying we can design the test this soil moisture we can give these solutions for various problems which are finding in our agriculture sector so many applications can be provided in the 5g then one of the great initiative is nowadays smart cities in which the person living in that city should have all the facilities. For example, I want to go to a mall with my uh, family. Now uh, I go my car. There, what I require? Now suppose there is no facilities available. I reach at the venue and find that the parking is full. So this is not good, right? I had to come back. So what do you mean by so every application smart cities means whatever situation is there, whatever problem is there, so I can book the parking space right from my home. So I am relaxed. So I don't have to return back. Similarly, I can find out the situation in between. Okay, there is a traffic jam or not. Or suppose I am have taking the uh, going to a doctor. I am taking the health appointment. So all these things can be done starting from the homes, so that I may not feel any embarrassment in between. So everything is going like a smart. So this is called as a smart city. So various facilities which should be provided to their residents based on the technology, and that is smart. So the 5G helps in connecting all the various devices, equipments which are using in the cities and that are making our city smart. And then healthcare that we have discussed. So it is supporting a great facility in the healthcare like online diagnosis, online detection, online taking the message from any of the senior. So that is 5G. And again, it is security the security it is providing. Similarly, the satellite uh, 5G internet nowadays or 5G satellite, we are taking the help to the satellite for higher data transfer rate. 
so as we have seen nowadays we cannot think of the next generations at least i feel that within next 5 or 10 years 5g will be totally changing our way how we are living uh, now there will be totally change of the communication system there will be drone systems are there driverless cars are there satellite systems are already in place the energy on demand is there so all these things are helpful iot systems are there ai we are talking of now there is artificial intelligence so all these things what we're talking of the newer generation generations are totally requiring very high data transfer rate and for this what is the core what is the system that helps that is your 5g so 5g race is still going on whole of the world is now after it and very soon the whole of the world will be covered by the 5g the commercial deployment of 5g systems is expecting very soon because it helps our society humanity a much more easy way to live with it sports in so many ways as i had told like iot agriculture application medical applications smart cities smart systems it can provide us so whatever think whatever facility you may think of it can be helpful by the 5g like driverless cars are there in the next time to come we can go for that so 5g will provide at least a tenfold improvement in the experience compared to the 4g in terms of peak data rates as i just told if i want to download a hd movie right in the 4g it takes at least 15 minutes in the 5g it just takes yeah. nine minutes so it is making our life much more fast much more easier and much more enjoyable so again the 5g will deliver an ecosystem that is much more better uh, as i had right it is for sustainable technical and business innovation again 5g will support multi tenancy and network resource slicing models so new architecture we are going to design and 5g is designed based on sustainable and scalable technology what are the goals for your un there are 70 Sir, it was wonderful watching you talking on wireless communications, global system for mobile, future of humanities with 5G. Now, I will request Rishi sir to address the questions. I think um, um, we have lost the connection with uh, Dr. Silesh and um, I hope he'll be taking up a few of the queries. And uh, before we move on to... So yeah. I can uh, now I will request Mr. Pankaj with sir to be on the screen. I have given you all the necessary rights, sir. Over to you, sir. Uh, right. Uh, thank you very much. And I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir. Right. Great. So I'm just going to share my screen. Just give me a moment. Wonderful. So after the literary session, a bit of an insight into uh, what a student can expect when he or she comes to the university. Uh, a few things that I must say over here before I commence that uh, there are a few things in this presentation that I'm going to uh, figure out or I'm going to stress on that every student should take care of when he or she comes to a university or chooses a, a particular university. And not to say the first and foremost thing are the approvals and the accreditations. Approvals and accreditations for any college or university are of prime importance. And these are the kind of accreditations and approvals that we have got at LPU. Starting off quite recently, in a short while or some time back, we, got, uh, we were awarded the NAC A++ uh, ranking with a score of 3.68. Uh, on a four-point scale, and this is the highest score in the first cycle of accreditation amongst all government and private universities. So uh, this is a, a remarkable feat that LPU has achieved with the A++ ranking amongst all the private and the uh, private universities and the government universities as such. Followed by that, a few other approvals and accreditations that I must talk about. NAC, uh, one of them, and for Accreditation Council for Business Schools, this is for the management programs. Then uh, ICAR, the prestigious ICAR, we have got the approval from Indian Council for Agriculture Research. Then uh, UGC approval, obviously, since we are a 
uh, a university. So we have an approval from the University Grants Commission, both for distance and the regular programs. For all education-oriented programs, uh, we have got approval from uh, the National Council for Teacher Education, NCTE. Followed by that, we have got approvals from PCI, Pharmacy Co Pharmaceutical Council of India, and then we have got uh, Council of Architecture, Bar Council of India for law programs, Institute of Town Planners for planning programs, and uh, not to say, not to mention, uh, not to forget to mention the physiotherapists we have got, we are also offering physiotherapy programs. So we are also having approvals from the Indian Association of Physiotherapists and uh, Punjab State Council for Agriculture Education. So these are the kind of approvals and accreditations that we have got. And these are also mentioned on our website. Uh, a few memberships. We are a member of the prestigious AICTE. We are a, a member of AIU. And these are some of the other organizations that we are a member of. Followed by that, placements. It is said that uh, admissions are the stepping stone of a student's career in a university. And uh, placements is the culmination of the same so uh, some of our flag bearers uh, we have we are we are very proud to, of our flag bearers having a salary package and under the belt of as high as three crores and multiple lakhs with the uh, with brands such as google and uh, microsoft and so on and so forth so our students are placed all over the world and they are very well placed all over the world this is the one crore club that we have got over here at LP, these people have bagged a package of one crore at, uh, uh, and they have started at LPU. Followed by that, extracurricular activities are of prime importance. Extracurricular activities is said that uh, all work, no play uh, makes Jack a dull boy. So you have got ample of a lot of opportunities at LPU in terms of extracurricular activities, be it uh, uh, sports, be it this is something which is uh, uh, a very uh, prestigious for us. We were in the Kelo India University Games. We were the runner-ups. And uh, you'll be uh, very pleased to know that uh, Nita Chopra is our student, Bajrang Punya is our student. So these are the kind of uh, people who have uh, studied at LPU. The year was 2019 and uh, Indian Science Congress was hosted by LPU. This was the 106th edition and none other than the Prime Minister of India inaugurated it. We have had uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama at the university giving away degrees to the students. We had two former presidents of India and Afghanistan sharing the same stage, giving away degrees to the students. We had the former and late uh, finance minister of India, Sri Arun Jaitliji in the campus and uh, he inaugurated a startup school. Then we had the former vice president of India, Venkaiya Naidu in the, in the campus, Mr. Venkaiya Naidu. He gave, the, gave away degrees to the students in one of the convocation ceremonies. Gohar Gopal Das was there in the campus uh, some time back and he gave away live sermons to the students. Yes, these are the kind of uh, exposures that we believe in giving to the students. And uh, uh, yes, the Bollywood stars also come over here. So talking about infrastructure, infrastructure is, infrastructure is very important. Infrastructure, talking about infrastructure, this is the, uh, these are the kind of blocks that we have got at uh, LPU. Uh, this uh, block that you're seeing over here, a group of blocks, they house the central library of the university. This is the auditorium, capacity of 2,500 people in a single go. These are the laboratories, then the libraries. Uh, at the help of, of the university, at the center of the university, we have got a mall. And uh, let's go inside the mall. These are the interiors of the mall. We have got a gym, we have got gyms, and uh, these are manned by international trainers. Uh, bowling alleys, recreational facilities in ample uh, amount. God forbid anybody falls ill, but somebody falls ill, we are ready with the hospital within the campus. Uh, this is a outdoor uh, auditorium that we have got. A panoramic view of the university as such. We are a very lush green university and uh, a uh, very clean university as well. Sometime back, we were awarded as the top 10, um, amongst the top 10 cleanest universities in India. Talking about sports, we have got sports infrastructure, starting from Olympic size swimming pools to uh, shooting ranges, you name a court, you get it, badminton, basketball, volleyball, and so on and so forth. Even a squash court is at your disposal. This is the aerial view of our indoor sports complex that we have at LPU.
the residential facility is in ample quantity. More than 22,000 students are living in the campus as such. So uh, one final thing before uh, I take you further, I need to talk about is the study grant. This is a very unique uh, initiative by LPU. Let us say some uh, student wants to go and study at IIT. That's perfectly all right. The student will give the JW exam. Mm -hmm. If the student gives the JW exam and also clears our LPU NEST exam, there's an exam called as LPU NEST, which is the national exam hosted by LPU. Now a student clears the JW exam and also clears the LPU NEST exam mm -hmm. with good scores and uh, opts to go to IIT to study. So to go to IIT and to study over there, LPU will give the student a grant of one lakh rupees in order to study at that institution, though the student is not studying with us. This is called a study grant. It's primarily aimed at uh, facilitating the cream of India who make it to the top universities or the colleges in India. This is not only there in engineering, but for medical students as well, for management, design, law, and hotel management students. So this is a unique initiative done by LPU, and uh, we have uh, distributed crores of rupees uh, as study grants to students who have uh, made it to these uh, institutions, but they have appeared for our LPNIST exam. So. Uh, before I hand over the reins back, I just want to take you uh, live to uh, our website if you want to find out the eligibilities and uh, fee structures and things like that. So this is our website. Allow me to share it to you. I hope the website is uh, visible. Yes, sir. Right. So that's our website, lpu.in. Now, if a student wants to go and check out the eligibility or the fee structure of a specific program, then uh, you need to visit lpu.in, go to the admissions tab. And for undergraduate students, they can select the program from here. Uh, for students who want to go in for PG over here after 10th program and so on and so forth. So can you select a program? Let's say I want to go in for uh, today's topic is electronics. So we are electronics based uh, session today. So after 12th, I go to the regular programs and I'm taken to the next page. I go to the next page and uh, I will select my specific program or the program of my choice. Say, for example, my choice is uh, engineering and uh, I would select the engineering program. Right. There we go. We have got engineering and this will also tell you what are the different branches of engineering that we are offering, starting from uh, computer science to civil. So we have uh, we have got gamut of programs. We, I go to electronics and then I've got number of programs in electronics. I select BTEC electronics and then scroll down a little bit. This is the eligibility of the program. Pass with 60% marks in aggregate in 12th with physics, maths, and English or equivalent with LPU NEST. This is the eligibility. Similarly, over here, you can click the fee tab. You can learn about the fee. You can uh, uh, click the scholarship tab. You get to know about the scholarships and so on and so forth. So this is how you can browse the website and get to know about the eligibility, fee structures, and placements and whatever you want to know, uh, you can just click at a click of a button at lpu.in, you get to know all these details. I guess uh, the information provided by me is handful for all the students. Uh, I guess I'm done. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I'm uh, over with the information that I wanted to provide. Uh, back to you, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, you can take over. Okay, thank you, sir, for your guidance on admissions. And I think we have lost the connection with uh, Selich Kera, sir. So, experts, your year of research, your so, depth so of good understanding. Good interrupt, the madam. Uh, just a while, um, uh, Dr. Selich uh, is back, I suppose. He, and, yes, uh, yes. Sir. Can you hear me, Dr. Selich? Can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me now, sir? Salid, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, uh, we have uh, one or two queries uh, from the um, attendees. Can we take up those? 
Sure, sir. Definitely, sir. So one of the query that I would like to take up, which is more important, that seems to be over here now. Now, what are your valuable inputs for the additional courses or certifications for the students to meet the industry 5.0 expectations? Are we giving some uh, certifications and additional courses for the students? At help you, sir? Yeah, of course. Okay, sir. So, sir, we have especially tie-up with DADV, which is a... I think there is... I a think we have lost the connection. In the meanwhile, I would like to say that the students who are watching us, the, the broadcast, they can note down, they can jot down the phone numbers and uh, the email IDs that will be handy for them. Uh, if they want to call us, if they want to talk to us, if they want to get a guidance from our uh, experts, from our expert counselors, career counselors, they can obviously call us on our helpline numbers. That's uh, uh, 018245170000. And they can always write to us on admissions at the retailpu.co.in. And uh, your queries would be answered due to be guided. Back to you, ma'am. I think uh, so. Would you like so to address the question once again? Hello, uh, Dr. Salis, you can switch off the video in case there is a network issue. Uh, and yeah. you can answer through the mic only. Okay, sir. I so think it is fine now, sir. My voice yeah. is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, sir. The answer to your question is, sir, in our STPLE, we have a tie with DADV Germany. So, this is the academy which is specially for 5G. And in the previous years, two years, we have been taking the courses on the 5G and these courses are specially trained by the industry experts from DADP Germany and students are hired and getting placed based on that. And second number two, we are very soon setting going to set up a center of excellence in SEEE leading to the 5G. Wonderful. And uh, another query that is coming. Uh... So again, we have current, lost the connection. I guess. We have lost. No issues. No issues. We can always take up the queries through email. We will be answering the queries through email. No issues as such. And um, I would request Mr. Pankaj to, to show the web page for the webinars which are upcoming in future so that the students can register uh, for those. Sir, you need to unmute just, yourself. Just, yeah, 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 just give me a moment. We go to admissions, and uh, in admissions, we go to LPU webinars. We just go to this particular link, and I've clicked it over here. This will give you the summary or uh, the details of all the webinars that are to be held in the future. And the student can go to this particular link that is admissions under admissions link. The student can go to the webinar link. Uh, I'm sorry, the connection is a little slow, but it will come onto the screen. But the path that the student has to take is obviously admissions, lp.in admissions, and then to the webinar page and the webinar, the schedule of the webinars will open up accordingly. The student can opt and the student can go and uh, enroll himself for uh, the webinar. I hope, uh, Dr. Rishi, that's, that's, the, that's the path. network issues when they're the least required but uh, yes the the gist of the situation is that the student can log on to lp.in and go to admissions and then uh, select the webinar page and uh, the schedule will appear i'm sorry but uh, due to some network issues it's not appearing but the path is pretty evident the student can obviously follow that particular path there we go uh, the so see upcoming webinars so you can just click it over here and this is the array of webinars that would be available to the students in the times to come. You can register by uh, clicking over here, or you can scan code 
and you can register for the various upcoming uh, webinars. And uh, uh, to the bottom of the page, the entire schedule is over there. Thank you, Pankaj, sir, for your guidance. So, Rishi, sir, would you like to address some questions or? No, I don't think so. We would be able to connect with Dr. Salish. It's not a regular connection. So, we can wind it off right now and we'll uh, revert to the queries through email, definitely. Okay, Over to so. you, yeah. Experts, your year of research, your depth of understanding the topic, your ability to present the topic in such an interesting way produced one of the most wonderful afternoon for all the attendees. On behalf of all the attendees of this webinar, I would like to thank you for your insightful presentation. Hopefully the attendees found this webinar to be valuable and will be able to utilize the information provided in this webinar to take a better decision regu uh, regarding your admissions. I am obliged and once again, thank you to Dr. Kara and Mr. Pankaj to strengthening this platform. Signing off for the day. Thank you so much. Thank you.